Welcome everyone. My name is Elian Ramos. I'm ER Geek Goddess. And tonight we're going to be talking about a topic that is very important, not only for our community, but for anyone who lives and breathes online. Um, as we know, net neutrality is, is um, a topic that causes a lot of animosity and a lot of confusion whenever it's brought up online. And so to dispel some of the myths that are out there and to um, and to clarify uh, how the issue is going to impact all of us, you know, whether you're a blogger or a business owner or, you know, just somebody who checks Facebook every now and then. Um, this is something that affects all of us, and we're going to be discussing it with some of the top experts in this issue. Um, I have the pleasure of welcoming to our Hangout tonight Commissioner, FCC Commissioner Mignon Clyburn. Good evening. How are you, Commissioner? I'm doing it's well. How are you? Here. Thank you. Um, I also have uh, Jason Lawrence, who is a scholar at Rutgers University School of Communications. Jason, welcome to the Hangout. Hello, everybody. And last but not least is Arturo Carmona, who is the Executive Director of Presente.org. How are you, Arturo? Pretty good. Thank you for having me. And okay, so we we talked a little bit about all of the confusion that uh, net neutrality that as a topic brings in when we are online. And um, I'm gonna go directly into the questions because I know I have everybody's uh, time is very limited. So um, I'm gonna start with the commissioner. Commissioner, could you please define what net neutrality is and give us a background um, brief on you know where where is the issue right now? What what should be what should we know about net neutrality? Well, if I had to sum it up in one word, I would use the word equality. It is a concept where a Professor Wu um, first made famous uh, that said traffic that is traveling over the internet, um, whether it comes from you, whether it comes from me, whether it comes from a big company or not, that that traffic should be treated basically um, equal. So when you hear the term net neutrality, I know it stirs up a lot of emotions. But it really, for me, means level, playing field, and free speech. So again, all content um, that is uh, legally um, engaged, um, you know, all internet traffic, um, and, and all devices that you choose that are not harmful to uh, the internet, that that should be a freedom. You have the freedom to choose and engage and, and all of that. So consumers can visit whatever websites they want. If you want to have an engagement with your doctor, you can. Uh, if you want to uh, you know, study German uh, from someone who lives in Germany, uh, that you have the capacity uh, to do so. Small startups who cannot afford a storefront can basically on a shoestring budget will have the capacity uh, to engage. And so that's what it means to me to have uh, the capacity uh, to have uh, as equal access that no matter who you are, no matter where you live, no matter how your economic condition, what your economic condition is, that you have the capacity to engage. And that, for me, is what an, an open internet or a net neutrality engagement at the heart of it all is about, what it's about. And what are the, the objectives of the net neutrality groups? So when we talk about um, when we talk about the objectives is to ensure that there is a free and open engagement for all people. So that is at the heart. Now, when we talk about the particulars, um, what you know as of last month, we set up a process, a notice of proposed rulemaking, which will allow the public, which will allow companies, which will allow anyone in uh, that is a potential engager, to take part to weigh in, to voice their opinions as to what this infrastructure that we hold here, what it should look like, and what our engagement should be. And so the public has uh, just under 100 days to engage, to, to weigh in, to tell the FCC, this is what my vision of an online engagement should be in FCC. I hope you listen. And we all know how important it is for for communities, especially underserved communities, to have access to all of these. Um, can you see me? 
<laughs> I, I can't see you. Uh, you know, absolutely. It levels the playing field. You don't have to, if you're an entrepreneur, you don't have to have a storefront. If you are an individual um, who is um, in a school district that might be underperforming or does not have a, you know, a foreign language teacher or does not have ad advanced mathematics, at the click of a mouse, you have connecti not connectivity uh, to an entrepreneur, enterprise, or someone uh, that um, can, will, and can and will engage with you. It levels the playing field. That is why this infrastructure is so important because it is enabling. It is allows for the freedom of, of exchange and expression. It is so important, it's particularly with communities who traditionally have been underserved. This platform, to me, is the last and the greatest potential to narrow every single divide uh, that uh, we uh, know that is a challenge in our nation. Mm -hmm. And speaking of com underserved communities, um, I want to direct this question to Arturo. Arturo, I know that your organization, uh, Presente.org, recently published a new infographic about how net neutrality is going to affect Latinos. And I want you to talk a little bit about the infographic and, and the key points in that infographic. And in the meantime, I'm going to share the infographic with our viewers. Yeah, no, and, and, and again, thank you for having me. I think that this is, when you begin to talk about net neutrality, it's important to, to recognize that this is an issue that uh, is not well known in our community, uh, but that should be, because it's a very concerning issue that could have huge ramifications on our community when it comes to, as the commissioner rightly said, uh, our communities of color, uh, when it comes to small businesses, when it comes to our democracy, uh, and when, when it comes to uh, artists of color. And so uh, we're deeply concerned about the steps that uh, some of these proposals, particularly the proposals by Commissioner Wheeler, uh, and as the infographic demonstrates, uh, uh, there's deep concerns about uh, uh, some of these proposals diminishing Latino representation online. Latinos currently experience subpar representation in movies, on TV, and in the news. And the FCC proposal would prioritize corporations over independent media. Uh, we're also very concerned uh, over what it could have, the impact it can have on, on our democracy. We've seen, especially through immigration reform, that we've been able to elevate in an unprecedented level stories, the stories of undocumented immigrants, the stories through graphics, through different, through different means online. And we're concerned that our political battles that are often waged against powerful and better funded adversaries, the internet has allowed us as organizations to win against corporations. And again, uh, the, the immigration reform is an example, but also uh, opportunities like the, uh, a big campaign that we had uh, against CNN and Lou Dobbs, enemy number one of the Latino community a couple years back. All of that was done uh, through online engagement. Uh, it, we're also deeply concerned about the impacts it can have in limiting mobile internet access for Latinos. Conducting essential activities uh, like paying the bills or applying for a job could become harder the inter if internet service providers choose to slow or block sites on mobile. Uh, on and on, you know, stifle economic development in Latino communities, higher fees for internet content, uh, you know, are all issues that concern us. Uh, you know, net neutrality, as the commissioner was saying, is the basic principle that keeps the internet free and open. It prevents internet service providers uh, like AT&T, Comcast, Time Warner, uh, or even Verizon from blocking, censoring, uh, interfering, or discriminating against web traffic and content. And so, uh, you know, we're very concerned about some of these proposals that are on the table and, and the impact, impact it, can, it can have on on people of color in particular. Uh, you know, the internet provides a platform uh, for communities of color to speak freely without being silenced. Um, uh, people of color own very few TV stations, radio stations, and so leaving the internet as one of the only places where we can share our stories and experiences is fundamentally important to us. Uh, and for us, it's also very important on the democracy side. For organizers and activists, the internet is a is a digital town square, a place where our communities can mobilize and fight for social justice. And so for us, this is a, 
uh, an extremely important issue. It's an issue where we also need to make sure we bring our community along with us. Uh, and so we're doing that type of work. And the response has been phenomenal. We've gotten great response from our community on online, social media. Uh, and so we're very excited by the level of engagement that, that Latinos are showing to this issue as they learn about it. Mm -hmm. I, I want to give the commissioner a, a um, opportunity to reply to this, and then I want to hear, because Jason has a very particular view on this issue too. So commissioner, tell us what, what you think about what Arturo just brought up. Oh, one of the things that I, I will agree is that this is one of the greatest platforms of our time. It is an potentially an open uh, infrastructure, if allowed to continue uh, to be so, uh, that just literally can close divides, that can inform, that can educate, that can uplift, that could just you know just be. It's the, the most incredible equalizer that I've seen in in my 52 years. And the reason why the debate is so intense right now is in January the court basically struck down. Uh, you know, most of the rules in which we put forth, which were six high-level rules that would govern uh, the exchange or govern the, govern the environment and the engagement in which we have taken for granted, that it has shown and been a fuel for so much growth uh, in, the, um, in, in the U.S. and the world. And so the court struck down um, uh, our, the, the way in, in which we uh, use the, the rules in which the foundation for which we uh, came up with the rules, the court said uh, we take issue with that. So what the commission was forced to do is either do nothing and have basically no rules of the roles, which means companies themselves would basically say this is how I'm going to treat this, this is how this engagement will be, or we would have a regulatory body with your help with the engagement from the public say here is the framework in which we will govern ourselves to enable a free and open structure. So this is what um, the notice of proposed rulemaking and the exercise in which we will engage in over the next hundred or so days with your help. This is why it's so important and Arturo is right. Um, this is one of the most important issues of our time that for years going forth um, will just define how we engage online, will define how free and open in terms of expression and, and opportunities. Uh, this is it um, for um, you know, all of us to get this right, to get the rules right, so we can continue to grow, prosper, and express ourselves freely. And um, I, I truly hope that's the, that's the um, final outcome of all of this, you know, because it, it affects our everyday lives. Now we do everything on the internet. Right. Um, it's not Jason, going to happen without engagement. It's not going to happen organically. It's going to happen if all of us are a, a community of a whole and saying this is what I want this platform to look, look like. It is so important for all of us to engage, particularly uh, minority communities, um, African American and Latino communities, who honestly engage differently. And I know we're going to talk about this. Uh, Latino and African American communities, by and large, in terms of their primary engagement online, it's with a mobile infrastructure. It's through your, your, that cellular phone. And to be honest with you today, it is not on par um, the, the, the mobile engagement is a totally different framework, um, and I don't think it should be that way. Now, I know Jason, I, I want to give Jason the opportunity to, uh, to talk about this because I know that he has a different perspective um, somewhat on, on the issue. So, Jason, what sure. are your thoughts on how it affects the community? Sure, and thank you so much for, Eliane, first of all, I just want to thank you for, for hosting this conversation. And Commissioner, I, I can't agree with you more. I think we all know that the Internet is the future of all of the, the ways that the community that communities will be empowered economically, socially, in terms of access to the future of health care, the future of education. But net neutrality, in many ways, I think has been done such a great disservice to the Latino community, at least in the debate about net neutrality has, in that over the last several years as, uh, as we finally had rules in place and then they were, they were struck down and now we're in a fight again, I, it, there's almost like there's a net neutrality brain drain. The true issues facing the Latino community, African American community, rural communities, so many folks that are disconnected from the digital economy have not a lot to do with net neutrality. 
They have everything to do with what we've seen just recently in, the, in tech companies like Google coming out with their, uh, their employment records. Two and three, three percent of, of, of employees are Latino at Google. And I think that that represents, uh, it maybe could be better or, or maybe even slightly worse than the rest of the tech, uh, the tech sector. These are the issues of our time. We live, for example, in the Uber and the, the, um, the Airbnb economy where these companies are worth $10 billion each. It took Starbucks over 13 years to get to $10 billion of, of valuation and Uber and Airbnb have gotten, in there, gotten there in just a quarter of that time. Latinos, African Americans, rural communities have very little participation that in, those, in those businesses and in that economic opportunity and that is the issue of our time. And just, I'll just say one, one last little snippet on this. Net neutrality, just like all, all of the other issues in this, this arena, is a nuanced set of issues. And what I look forward to is, is the Wheeler proposal being passed so that we can finally put this behind us. So that we once again have rules that are again of the road as the rules that, we, that were governing the internet before and also allow for, for the development of business models that I think actually could be beneficial to communities in the future. Hmm. Very interesting and and okay so rules or not rules right that's that's kind of like what, what I'm hearing here um this this is um, a question that just came in from um, Facebook this is um via Edgar Mejia mm -hmm. how does anyone ensure that ISPs won't neglect the poor or underserved if they're unable to afford faster better internet speeds yeah, I, I think, think, I think that, that's a great question if, uh, oh, Please. Go ahead. Who, who wants to go first? <laughs> go ahead, I'll, I'll, Arturo. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that's a great question, um, and I think that um, I think that that's one of the main concerns when it comes to net neutrality. I think when it comes to net neutrality, and you begin to create toll lanes for you know small uh, internet providers. I'm sorry, small content creators. When you start creating toll lanes for artists of color and small businesses and people that create content and they're distributing content particularly small producers in the Latino community uh, you are going to begin to see that those types of, of costs are going to are going to trickle down to the consumer and it's going to increase the cost uh, for the, the especially for communities like like Latinos we're already seeing that the digital divide is a very real issue uh, we're seeing that progress is being made, but it's not going away. That, pro that, that problem is, is here, and, and, and unfortunately, it's here to stay for quite some time. And, and the Wheeler proposal is a direct uh, affront to combat the digital divide uh, by increasing the cost on our community. And so I think it's very critical that we don't talk in general generalities about uh, net neutrality and, and, and keeping the internet open. Let's be specific here. I think that uh, uh, these, these proposals that are on the table uh, are a direct affront uh, on our ability to protect our democracy for the many reasons that we've already discussed here uh, and, 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 and specifically on the cost of, of Latino consumers. And we could go into that a little bit more, but I know we don't have a lot of time. So when I, when I hear, Elian, when I hear um, uh, when I hear that question, um, I think about um, you know my job and my responsibility in saying that is broader than open internet itself. That's a deployment um, you know issue. That's a, a, an availability um, you know issue. Um, that is an access you know that's an access issue. So one of the things that we're doing, or several things that we're doing at the FCC is ensuring and, and, and reforming our universal service program which will ensure that there is affordable ubiquitous broadband in these communities. We all know the drill that companies go where the profits where they think things are most profitable and, and um, uh, underserved, um, uh, undercapitalized and rural communities that is not where they're going to build infrastructure. So the FCC very wisely has engaged in this space by providing monies in areas where we call high cost areas to these companies to build out infrastructure. So yes, in terms of that open internet engagement, in terms of net neutrality, is it important for us to ensure that there's a level playing field? 
But there also needs to be a level playing field when it comes to infrastructure. And where it does not happen because businesses will not invest, it is up to the government to provide the incentives and sometimes the capital to ensure that happens. So when we close divides, it's about infrastructure also as well as access online. And if I if I could piggyback on that, I think the commissioner is so articulate about those points. And look, digital literacy is the other half of that, right? It's it's we we in many ways through private capital we've closed so much of the infrastructure gap that was the digital divide. When we talk about the digital divide today, we're talking about two things. We're talking about one about a great number of people who either can't afford or don't see the value in participating in a in a home broadband connection or we're really talking about a, a huge differential in the ways that Latinos, African Americans, poor people and others are prepared to transact online. Mm -hmm. And that's how we, we get to a, the digital divide of today which is a very small part portion of the 50 plus billion dollar app market actually uh, shows ownership and participation by Latinos and others. Right. That's how we get to the, the digital divide today where we see a very small number of, uh, of communities of color actually come out and be ready to transact at the highest levels online. Again, these, uh, to me, are the issues of our time. Hmm. I, I, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, I, in, in, again, I'm not the, the most well-versed thing. I'm, I'm more like the, your common person, you know, a, a blogger, somebody who makes her living online. But um, I'm sure you're aware of all the misinformation you know things, things that are uh, being said online. What are some of those um, common um, incorrect information that you see out there? And 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 where can we find? Where, what is the truth in all of this? You know, who who is really benefiting from from all of this? You know, well, if I, I could, could, and I'm. Go ahead, go ahead, Jason. I would just add, and I know Arturo would have a, a, a probably a different perspective on this, but I think that the greatest misunderstanding about the net neutrality debate is are so much of the the kind of the the, the fluffery, the idea that there are tolling, going to be toll lanes and all this stuff on the internet. Mm -hmm. This is uh, there is nothing about the, if net neutrality is nuanced, right? And there are all these rules, these principles that are a part of this thing called net neutrality. It's really important that we that all legal kind. 100% available. It's important that the FTC continue uh, in, a, in an enforcement capacity to ensure that there's no diminution of, of signal, right? These are all things that everyone agrees with. We, it's important that there is a continuation of, uh, of, of really clear principles of transparency so that everyone knows how things are, are going on. These are, these are all part of the rules that I sincerely hope are ultimately passed so that we can put this behind us. But I think that when we talk about net neutrality as a kind of um, this this boogeyman that suddenly will create toll lanes or that the small blogger won't be able to to participate online, I just I think that that does a disservice to the debate and I think it does a, dis does a disservice to to us as a community as well. Mm -hmm. Commissioner and or Arturo, do you have anything to add to that? So I know Arturo will, will have something that might not be congruent with what Jason said, but um, you know, one of the things that, um, from my perspective, from a regulatory perspective, and I mentioned it, um, you know, at the top, is that today we basically have no rules of the road, with the exception of with the exception of the transparency rule uh, that that the commission put forth. There is there are no other rules of engagement. So in terms of uh, blocking in terms of you know unjust discrimination to be honest with you that can legally occur today there's nothing stopping a company from engaging in that manner and engaging in a preferential manner uh, with uh, their uh, a customer that they might um, uh, have more of a kinship than you and a lot of people don't want to hear that but that is what is at stake right now so what we are doing now is putting forth what we think will be a, a legally sustainable framework to ensure that your engagement is what you expect it to be. That a company cannot dictate how you conduct, how you interact, how you engage over the internet. That the government cannot dictate your type of engagement over the internet. Clear high-level rules of the road leave uh, be, 
using a legally sustainable framework is what we are uh, seeking to do through this notice because today that does not exist. Here, here. We, we've been working uh, when it comes to, to Latino advocates, to folks that are trying to protect the internet. We've been working really hard to make sure that there are rules in the game. But we want to make sure that those rules in the game actually protect those ne those people that that need protection. Uh, you know, uh, in 2010, you know, the FCC established some rules to protect net neutrality. But you know, the reason we're in this place is because Verizon and other large corporations uh, funded a tremendous amount of of resources to block those rules through federal courts and to ensure that the FCC considers alternative proposals. And so uh, when we talk about rules in the game, it's important to, to you know, put this into context. I think what we're talking about here is, yeah, let's regulate this, let's put some rules, but let's, let's have a, a level playing field. Let's treat ISPs, internet service providers, as public utility, uh, public utility or a telephone, uh, telephone lines where, you know, the FCC can have robust oversight and can play a referee role so that we have an internet that's well regulated. Nobody's saying let's not regulate this, uh, but 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 the reality is that uh, the current proposals uh, on the table uh, are set to to benefit uh, a, a, a set of corporations. Of course, we have you know another set of corporations on the other side that are the content creators and and the providers. But but th but the reality is that when you when you when you start saying let's not make this about toll lanes, let's not make this about let's have an honest conversation. I think it is about that because it it, it will have a, a trickle down effect on our community. So I think it's fundamentally important that we that we have an honest conversation, that we talk about the facts and the potential impacts this this decision can have on, on our community as a whole. Well, Ms. Ramos, what I what I I, I think that we, what you will find in the item, which is three pages, I will admit um, that you have the capacity and the ability to weigh in. So we might have drawn um, the, the chairman drew a conclusion where he thinks uh, the direction in which he thinks um, we should go. Um, so um, you you know uh, I, I, I'm not going to argue with uh, what uh, to put forth. But we did ask questions also about what he just mentioned, which is basically another form of regulation that we call Title II. Um, and so you've got the opportunity to weigh in and say, should we go in this direction or that? And that, to me, in terms of this type of uh, framework, is one which will allow for healthy and robust exchange. And um, anyone who wants to weigh in, uh, if they want this, you know, wants to go left or right or some type of hybrid, they have an opportunity to do so because there's an, uh, a hybrid concept in there also um, that's very interesting that um, I hope will fuel more uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. and and I just, speaking, go ahead, go ahead, Jason. Just a moment, just to say one thing. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I think that I think the idea of the hybrid concept is exactly where we need to go. The reality is that the regulatory structure governing the internet is is is. Is is aged and uh, and the internet has outgrown it, and so we do need a telecommunications act for the 21st century, and that that will take some action and some some really good thinking from this community and uh, and in Congress as well. Mm -hmm. And I I know um, you know it's it's very important for the same reason that that you just uh, expressed, Jason, that that we get involved in in the whole discussion. Um, and I know, Commissioner, this question is for you. I know that the FCC has set up a system for um, for us to comment on the kind, you know, the, the regulations, the, and, you know, what we want the net to look like in the right. 21st century. So can you, can you tell us where people can go to comment and what is the outcome that you're going that you're waiting for after this comment period is over. Well, as I said, for the next um, about 45 more days, you'll have an opportunity to comment directly on um, what uh, what the rules uh, should be. So you can go on our website on um, FCC.gov and scroll over to the Open Internet. We have a, uh, a a section strictly for this particular engagement, and so the public can weigh in that way. They can weigh in. Um, I know it's, it's it's not fashionable, but they can also mail. Um, you know, at the FCC, I believe we're at 445 12th Street Southwest 
I always invert the um, uh, uh, zip code, um, but um, we, you can always write also. Um, and then <laughs> after that uh, reply period, um, after that period, um, comment period is over, we have a reply period where you can see what everyone else has submitted and you can reply and, and comment on that. Um, so you got almost a, a one-two punch. You can directly weigh in, uh, in in terms of what you want the rules to look like. You can take a few days and look and see what others have said, and you can comment on that. So um, I, I think it's a, a very interesting and, and robust opportunity for us to engage and really, honestly, let the government know what you want this framework to look like for a free and open uh, internet, which we all want. Well, you heard it, people. You get your your internet, you know, your little fingers out there and start clicking. Go to FCC.gov and comment on this because I think that we all feel very passionate about it. And you know, and I'm not sure that we're going to reach any consensus tonight. You know, obviously because um, the, there's um, a lot of passionate opinions here, and you know, and the and the commissioner also. Um, I think. What, what the FCC is looking for is for people to weigh in on the on the Absolutely. issue to hear all the voices. So, um, this is your internet. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, I, I have a, one of my last questions here. I know we're running a little bit out of time, and I, you know, I hope that you don't mind staying a couple more minutes. This was the fastest half an hour online, Eddie. I know, really. <laughs> Very intense. But um, I want to ask, you know, just because I have to, what is, what is the bottom line here? You know, who is it really that is benefiting from all of this? Is it just a battle be between the broadband providers and the content producers? or What is really going on here for, for our um, education? I mean, I want to know. To me, it's about the consumer. It's about your ability to determine winners or losers, not Mignon Clyburn, not the FCC, not the internet service provider, but you. So in terms of innovation, in terms of the creation, um, Jason mentioned the creation of all of these apps, in terms of the creation of a better ecosystem environment where you live, work, and play, uh, where you get educated, where you get your health care, this is what this is about. And this platform allows in an expedited way you know, Jason mentioned, you know, those uh, uber millionaires, um, you know, who have really done things in a very truncated period of time. This allows whatever your payment, whatever your, um, you know, delivery, whatever it is you want, the Internet has the capacity to get you there faster. And we want this platform to remain free and open. We're not going to take it for granted that it's going to organically happen. Very few things that do not come grow out of the ground organically happen. So we know that we that there is a need for clear, concise, sustainable rules of the road. This is what we are going to uh, do in this uh, uh, in this notice, because the the price of not doing so is too high. We cannot afford to be like other places we see around the world that do not have open engagement because the price is too high. It is imperative for all of us who care about a free and open structure to engage, to weigh in, to care, because your communities, your children, your future um, depends on it. And any, anybody else has anything else to say about that? Guys? Um, <laughs> I mean, what? Well, for, to me, it's about it's about having an honest debate. You know, if, if if this is really about the consumer and the people, let's make it about that. Um, you know, we had a solution, uh, and the FCC made a decision in 2010. Verizon, AT and T, many other corporations, particularly broadband providers, didn't like it. They sued. Uh, and the federal court struck it down, and now we're back in this position where, where we need to figure things out, and there's alternative proposals that are more favorable to them. And so let's have an honest discussion about those proposals. Let's have an honest discussion about the, the details in those proposals and the implications it will have on communities of color. 
on truly keeping, uh, you know, protections for democracy, uh, truly keeping protections for small businesses, for providers, and then and let's have it and let's have that discussion uh, uh, openly with the American public. You know, I think that that's where we're at, and, and our particular concern is really with Latinos, who again own very little uh, radio stations, TV stations. Uh, it's with content producers, with with you know small producers, uh, and the impact it can have on them. And I think there's it's very well documented the impact it can have. I mean, it's not just us saying it. There's 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 very it's very well documented of the of the questions that 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 are out there in terms of the potential impact it can have. So I'll I'll, I'll leave my my last statements to that, Elaine. You, you know, I of course I also agree, and I think everyone in this debate agrees that we need reasonable rules of the road that reflect a middle ground in thinking. Um, and I do think that the the plan before us it really represents exactly that. I also, Ariane, I, I I hope to encourage you that after this this hangout is done, that we have other conversations about Latinos and digital literacy, Latinos online, digital skills, the future of, of innovation, be at the heart of why this debate is important. And, uh, and I think that when we paint in two broader strokes, uh, rules like net neutrality, which are very complex and nuanced, we miss the, the fact that we need innovation and we need to be able to participate in innovation um, in order to, to progress online. Absolutely. Yes. Well, Jason, since you offered, you know, I, I invite you. I invite you all, as a matter of fact, to come back and we can talk about, um, you know, how how the participation part of it. You know, not just necessarily the, um, you know, the the mechanics and the technology behind it, but the actual participation and the education that is needed in our communities, right? Absolutely. Um, and, but I, I know that you guys have, you know, um, I, I called you in for a half hour. We're now running on 37 minutes. But I want to give you the opportunity before we go to, um, to really say your call to action. What is it that you want coming out of this conversation for people to go and do so that this debate stops being a debate and begins being an actual uh, conversation that is fruitful for mm -hmm. all of us? Mm -hmm. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'm very simple and very short. I think you know we would invite uh, the community to continue to show their support. We've seen uh, tens of thousands of, of Latinos pour into Presente.org and express concern, uh, just as we've seen outpouring uh, of, of support uh, from many other communities around the country really showing great concern about what's currently on the table. I think that if it was about uh, what the people are concerned about and what the comments that have been provided, I think uh, hands down uh, those that are concerned with the current uh, Wheeler proposal would win. Um, but uh, continue to do that. We, we're, we're really blessed with the type of outpouring of, of concerns and, and questions that have come out from our community continue to come to our website continue to go to the FCC website that the commissioner rightly mentioned uh, and continue doing what you're doing because we're listening uh, and we're going to continue to fight this until the end until we uh, protect the internet uh, in a way that, that, that really allows us to protect our democracy, protect our entrepreneurship and innovation. And what I would offer as a call to action is that every Latino kid or parent watching should go to their local school PTA and make sure there's a coding program. They should go to their local principal and say, we want to figure out how to, how to get our kids using technology in schools. I think it's one of the best things that, if we're truly having an honest conversation, it's one of the most important ways that Latinos can actually engage and progress online. In a net neutrality debate, I would encourage everyone to actually read, read people who actually study the issue and read, read all the folks that you agree with and disagree with and, and really come to better understand the, the debates because Tom Oliver is hilarious but I think doesn't do a very good job of, of educating anyone about, uh, about the issue. If you believe in a free exchange of ideas, mm -hmm. that I believe, and I think we all believe are core to our democratic society, then this is an engagement for you. What the court said is that the FCC did not use a framework that was sustainable that could withhold the challenge. We have the opportunity to do that today, tomorrow, and over the next hundred or so days. We will review all of the comments that come from you. 
who believe in a free and open uh, platform, and we, I believe, will make the right decision that's sustainable and that will ensure that this incredible framework, this incredible impact that we call the Internet is free and open for all. I invite you to take part. Well, everyone, you heard it from all of the experts. You know, the, the best thing I think that we can all do is, you know, I think every conversation that I have online with the various people that I invite to the Hangout is get involved. And the way to get involved in this debate is go to FCC.gov, find that, that, um, that space where it's talking about net neutrality. There's a form there. Fill out the form and tell them what you think. You have a right to be involved in this conversation. The FCC is waiting for your questions and for your opinions on this. So please, please do engage. Um, I want to, um, I'm going to be ending the, the show now because I know my guests have um, some limited time here. But I want to give you, um, you know, my utmost thanks, uh, Commissioner Clyburn. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Uh, Jason. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jason, to you as well to, for being here and to taking the time. And Arturo, um, thank you so much for, for um, always fighting for the community. I, I follow what you guys are doing online, and, and I, I really like um, the idea of you gathering people's thoughts and, you know, and fighting for various rights. Um, I want to um, thank, thank everyone. Thank you for all the work that you do. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much, Ms. Ramos. It's been my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank everyone who has been watching. I know everybody was sending tweets, and um, the conversation was very animated as well online. People were sending tweets to me directly. But um, I'm going to uh, try to gather some of the um, answers for these questions and post them in my blog. But I want to thank you um, all for watching. And I, uh, before we go, I want to remind you that you can watch this broadcast again on my YouTube channel, which is YouTube slash user slash Elian Ramos. And also, uh, I'm going to have another Hangout tomorrow, which is about a completely different topic. It's about Latino men's health. And this being um, Men's Health Week, uh, I want to make sure that my Latino men uh, are well taken care of. <laughs> so I want to, I want all of you guys uh, to know that I appreciate you being here, and thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye for Bye, now. Bye, Commissioner.